Welcome back to the Titanium Hangar. This is Mike, and happy Friday, everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. Today, I want to talk to you about the new Masterpiece-ish GoBots. Well, they're, they're ish because they're not going to be Masterpiece scale. They're going to be 5.3 inches tall, and there's more information I'm going to give about these, but they're also ish because they're not based really on GoBots or on the Machine Robo Revenge of Chronos series, and they're to match that more than matching the original toy line from GoBots or even from Machine Robo Toys. We have seen Action Toys make their Machine Robo figures and I did not get into them. Now I did get the Psykill or the Machine Robo so I do know how these feel, how these look, how big they are and I gotta say that I passed on these. These are getting a little bit pricier now but I'll tell you why I passed on these and why I'm more excited for what Mega House is doing. Then we'll kind of get into some details and comparisons of the two and kind of talking about the difference between the lines. But what I expect to see going forward, because I'm excited and I'm all in on the new Mega House stuff, I was mostly out on the Action Toys. We'll discuss this and more going forward. Not to say Action Toys was horrible, but let me tell you all about this coming up. So starting out, this is the first shot we got at Masterpiece-ish GoBots. And they weren't really GoBots like we would see over here in the U.S. Now we're kind of spoiled in the U.S. because we're so used to companies catering to our media and our shows. And there's a lot of reasons for that because a lot of the U.S. media becomes popular elsewhere. Well, that's really not what happened uh, when it comes to GoBots. The Machine Robo series is way more popular overseas than it is than the GoBots that was the U.S. GoBots. And most people in the U.S., we don't have really access to English dubs. So we have to read subtitles and stuff if we want to watch that Machine Robo. It's my understanding. I haven't really attempted to find one that has English dubs. A lot of some of the Transformer stuff, like the Headmasters, has English dubbed so we can actually watch it and sort of experience it. But when it comes to this... The media is a big part of it. Now, this is not trying to match the U.S. toys or the U.S. cartoon, which is why the aesthetic is so far off. And for me, I didn't care for the aesthetic of these, and I also did not care for the size. So getting into the Bike Robo, this is the one I picked up on clearance for 30 bucks. Generally, the prices of these were around the $50 mark, $45 to $50, depending on where you bought them. And with that, they were about four and a half inches tall. I thought that it was kind of small. When I got it, I did feel like it was kind of small. The color of the lower legs, I was not really too impressed with them. But I, I knew down the road we would get something better when it comes to these. And we did actually get a better cycle we'll talk, cover in just a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at this alt mode for this guy. And the alt mode looks fine. Actually, I think that's where it is the strongest mode, is the alt mode. We see that a lot with GoBots and G1 Transformers, where the alt mode is the stronger mode of two. But it's not horrible of a figure, but I felt it's too small, and I felt it wasn't as good as, as can be done. The same company came out with a much bigger one, which is more of a masterpiece. And it's around the 7-inch scale, and although you, this one doesn't show the picture, this Psykill, Psykill is definitely... The figure, the character, that teaches you that robots have to shave. But Action Robo did a really good job with this figure, and they sent tons of them out for free to people to review. Of course, I had to pay my for mine, but I thought they were going to continue with this, but they didn't. I don't understand, because the thing sold out. It took about nine, ten months to sell out, but it sold out. Everybody seemed to love this figure. It was a great figure. I love mine. And I thought they would continue to do this, but they only did the one. And I don't know why they didn't do more. Okay, so this is their Eagle Robo, and this is Leader One. And with that, this is what kind of deterred me from getting into this line. I did not like the way Leader One looked, and that's one of the prominent characters. And I didn't like the scale, and I don't like the stylization of them. Right now, looking at it, I'm thinking it's not horrible either, but it just doesn't feel right to me. And with that, this figure's going for stupid money. Like, there's only one on eBay right now, and it's an auction at 75 bucks, and it's probably going to crack 100 And so you can't get it at retailers anywhere. So once these kind of things sell out, because there's so few of them made, and there's 
so few other options that come in the future, stuff like this is almost always more expensive on the secondary market, but I didn't like it, and so I passed on it. I have to say the alt mode does look pretty good, and so that's one plus for it, but I hear the transformation is gosh, awful. They also made the tank figure, and I forgot what they called this one, but one thing I want to point out about this is that the colors were way off, and I guess it has to do with the animation, I don't really know, but I know that I didn't like the color being off, and I could have dealt with the design, I thought the design wasn't very bad, it wasn't a bad design overall, but I didn't care for the color of it, and then, I usually don't care about alt modes either, usually for me if the alt mode is not the greatest, but the bot mode looks pretty good like this does, I'm okay with it, but then, then I saw the alt mode and I was like, this just doesn't feel right. It really doesn't feel right, and I'm also thinking, how could you take something as simple as tank? You literally fold them in half. How do you take something that simple and make it look like this? So I, I just didn't really care for this look, and I, I seriously considered getting into this line, and I did buy one of them. Then you have the Missile Tank Robo, which is... Missile Tank Robo is a very good-looking figure, and Blaster is one of my favorite GoBots, but... I, I I like the green one. I had the green one. The green one was what I saw in the show. This is the orange one, which was actually first sequentially in the line, but I didn't like the orange one or even know it existed until many, many years later. But even with that, I would have picked this one up, but it, it wasn't green. So, I mean, there's a lot of things for me personally why I didn't get into this line, and we're probably going to see some of these same issues with the line that's coming out, but with coloration and the aesthetic cues here and there. But I don't think it will be quite the same issues. But here we go with the alt mode. And I mean, I guess I could have lived with that alt mode. But it still wasn't quite, didn't quite have the feels for me. And seeing as how the U.S. toys in show were based on the same toys from that, I, I, I would have thought they could have gotten these a little bit closer. I think uh, Buggy Robo is one of the later series, later ones in theirs. But that was a good looking one overall. And so... Had I gotten into it, I would, this would have been one of my favorites, but I think it looks fantastic. But in addition to that, it looking great in the bot mode. It also looks really good in the alt mode. Here it is in the alt mode. So, I mean, this is one This is one that I think is a win-win in both areas, but I don't, I'm not really sure what's going on with the back of it, having that giant canister-looking thing on the back. But still, this matches, to me, it matches the original toy and uh, a lot better. So, I'm... Really more excited about that. Another one that I think they did a pretty good job on was uh, Space C. That is stylized. There there are some things like the forearms and the lower legs that it just seems like they could have done a little bit better with modern engineering and technology and all that kind of stuff. But still overall, it does kind of fit the character to me and it feels right just looking at it, uh, the alt mode here. But when the main characters didn't just do it for me, when they didn't do it for me, then there's no reason for you to jump into getting these these secondary characters like Spacey. But great shuttle mode overall. Uh, there's a couple things. I mean, you could pick this apart. This is a $40, $50 third-party figure from back in the day that obviously was not as successful as they wanted it to be, even though they are pretty much sold out. Here we go with one that they call uh, Cement Robo. <laughs> Cement Robo. But this is Blockhead. And, uh, and this one looks good, too. Now, this one... This one is another one that's really close to the original, and this one works very well, but it's still in that four and a half inch scale, and so, uh, but the, yeah, this, it's a good one. Alt mode is pretty much right on too, that works for me, uh, pretty good cement mixer alt mode. Another one that I think looks good is Blackbird Robo, Blackbird Robo that Action Toys made was... It turns into a jet. We're going to see that here in a little bit. It's actually a... Uh, I said the wrong terminology for it, I'm sure. But the thing about this one, Snoop, it really does match the Snoop. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool overall. Here's his alt mode. And I, I hear that the transformation on some of these is just tough. It's tough. And some, some of the parts on it feel like you might have to stress them, possibly break them to do the transformation. So, and that's just what I'm hearing. I haven't really messed with any of them other than the bike robo. Bike robo is not that bad, but it's probably one of the easier ones to transform. 
Then we haven't heard anything from them forever. They went radio silent. Uh, I think that's all the characters that they had out till they put this guy out. And this one is Tough Trailer. I'm not exactly sure who Tough Trailer is supposed to be. But yeah, Tough Trailer. I think it stacks, but it's blue. I'm not sure. I really am not sure. Uh, actually, somebody once told me, and I went in one ear and out the other, but... Uh, here's the alt mode for Tough Trailer. He's still hanging around everywhere for $100. So I don't know if maybe this figure and character that they put out at $100 price point didn't sell, so they didn't want to go forward with any other bigger ones. I don't know. But uh, character selection, where's the larger leader one that we would need? So... So pretty much it's over and stick a fork in it, they're done. So now we move into the newer era where we're with these new figures. Mega House doing these, I've never heard of this company before. And I am kind of excited for it though because I think that these figures are going to look a little bit more like what I would expect out of GoBots or even the Machine Robo kind of stuff. And with that, I hope that they have a high enough quality. Now, I did watch a couple of reviews on the first one, Rod Drill, which I haven't really spoken about so much because we're going to look at a side-by-side -side here. But Rod Drill is the name of Screwhead. And so with that, let's look at a side-by-side -side before we get into looking more at the new ones. So side-by-side, -side, Mega House versus Action Toys. You can see that the Mega House is bigger. Mega House is about 5.3 inches tall versus the Action Toys at a four and a half inch. Now, the Leader One Eagle Robo in the Action Toy line is significantly larger than the rest of them for whatever reason, so he would probably still scale well with these. So if you already had an Eagle Robo and you're buying these new ones, that would all work together. So a couple of differences that I noticed from hearing, watching a review and hearing people talk about this and uh, looking at a few other things online, finding out that the Mega House ones are sort of like a partial mar uh, partial kit it's a it's like a kit model kit so the arms are like cylinders and then you have to build the shoulder and the forearm and then clip the hands in you have to put the blue accents on the lower legs and and yet of course put the head on so there's 20 percent of assembly required maybe it takes you 20 or 30 minutes out of the box you can't just pull it out of the box and enjoy it versus the action toys now the action toys had die cast these will not have die cast, but these will be taller and a little bit closer to animation accurate or toy accurate for GoBots fans. Rodrill is the first one to be released. It's actually coming into stock at BBTS right now. It's funny that they they all showed up on BBTS just a couple of days ago. I pre-ordered all of mine. Then the next day, I, I got pictures for this, and they were all sold out. And then now they're back up for sale, so I don't know if... BBTS took them down for whatever reason or what, but I'm not sure about the story on that. Maybe they ordered more. So here we go with the alt mode, and I think the alt mode looks pretty good. It's very reminiscent, and I think it's better than what they do with the Action Toys alt mode. And you see the drill on the front. Now, that's a short torque drill. Don't want no short torque drill, so you get a longer drill if you like. <laughs> so there you go, the longer drill if you like. And... There's a couple of options. I think this longer drill extension piece is more for like the Revenge of Kronos animation than for the US animation, but we also come with a ton of accessories. Well, extra hands and heads and stuff. So there, there's the accessories that go with that one. Let's take a look at another one, which is Jet Blue Jet, Jet Blue, Blue Jet. Now this one versus the uh, Action Toys version I think looks a whole lot better. So the action toy on the left there, the Jet Blue Blue Jet, is a lot more stylized, and the one that's coming out looks a lot more like what we would expect. Now I don't see as much paint. I'm thinking that there's it's more plastic, less paint to it, so some presentation style might not be as good with these, but I still think that they're gonna look pretty good. And they are gonna be a little bit taller, so more more white, like what a G1-er would expect, a GoBots G1-er would expect. So I think they're going to look good. I'm in on them, and they're about a little, little less than an inch taller. But what a difference an inch makes, right? Here's the alt mode, and I think it's very classic looking. Very classic looking and very classy. A very nice alt mode. And there's going to be some other options for this when it comes out. But 
it's definitely a nice looking version of fighter now getting into their side kill i think the side kill does look better than the first small version but maybe not quite as good as what they did with their larger version but you gotta understand this is still hitting that fifty dollar price point and with that fifty dollar price point it's not going to be anything like a hundred and twenty dollar figure so i mean i understand that it is going to be significantly shorter still than their bigger one that they made but overall i think that if we're going to go with this scale with the 5.3 inches if that's all they're going to give us it's still fine that's going to sort of fit in with voyager scale figures from hasbro and if that's all we're getting for now or maybe for the next five years I'm going to support the line, and that I, for one, am definitely going to support the line, especially when they're giving us more classic looks that I like right here. So, what do you guys think about these GoBots that are coming out? Uh, I don't know how I missed it. I actually thought when I first saw prototypes at a show that it was just action toys putting theirs out again, and now that I'm taking a closer look at them, they are much different than what we've gotten before, but... Anyway, I'm interested in hearing what everybody thinks about this. Is anybody going to be getting in on these? Pre-order them at your favorite place. I can't find them at Show Z just yet. I don't know if Show Z is ever going to carry them or not. So that's something that I don't know just yet. But as soon as I find out, I'll let y'all know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Like and subscribe. And talk to your hanger out.